Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss one of the most important packet tracer activity, configuring IPv4 static and default routes. Before coming to this packet tracer activity, friends, if you are watching our channel first time, or if you like to get these type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon new to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. Now coming back to our packet tracer activity, here we can see our addressing table. And we will go through the objectives. We will examine the network and evaluate the need for static routing, then configure static and default routes and then finally we will verify the connectivity. Right, now we will come to part 1, examine the network and evaluate the need for static routing. Looking at the topology diagram, how many networks are there in total? Right, so coming to our topology, here we can see different networks. I think better I will use different colors uh, and we will highlight all the networks. Okay, so here we will fill some colors. Here we can see one network. Here we can see our second network. Yeah, it's here. And here we can see our third network. Okay, better we'll use other color. Then here we can see our fourth network. It's here. Then here we can see our fifth network. Hmm. So here we can see total 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Total 5 networks. Next question is how many networks are directly connected to R1, R2 and R3? Coming to our topology, here we can see that. Uh, here we can see uh, on this router R1, uh, two directly connected networks. And in this router R2, uh, three directly connected networks. One, two and three. Then coming to this uh, router R3, uh, two directly connected networks. Now, how many static routes are required by each router? to reach networks that are not directly connected. Yes, coming to our topology, uh, here already we told in this router R1 we have uh, two directly connected networks. So here we have to uh, teach these three networks to this router R1. One, two, three. Then coming to this router R2, uh, here already we told this R2 uh, uh, has three directly connected networks. So here we have to configure uh, two more static routes, uh, these two networks. Then coming to this uh, router R3, uh, R3 has uh, two directly connected networks. Uh, so we have to configure uh, three static routes. Here we can see those networks, one, two and three. Okay, next is uh, test connectivity to the R2 and R3 LANs by pinging PC2 and PC3 uh, from PC1. Uh, why were you unsuccessful? Okay, so first of all, we will uh, ping from this uh, PC1 uh, to PC2 and PC3. It will fail, obviously, because uh, this router R1 is unaware of uh, this network where this PC2 is connected. Also, uh, R1 is unaware of this network. Uh, where this PC3 is connected. That means this R1 is aware of only its directly connected networks. I mean these two networks. Here we can see that 172.31.1.0 and 172.31.1.192. Okay, we will uh, create a ping from PC1 to PC2 or PC3. We will get the IP address of PC2. It's here, coming to PC1, desktop, we will go to command prompt, we 
So here we can see destination host unreachable. Now we will come to part 2 configure static and default routes. Configure recursive static routes on R1. What is a recursive static route? Yes, whenever we configure this recursive static route, we have to use a next hop router address. Yeah, anyway, we will be configuring this recursive static route uh, in this uh, packet tracer activity uh, so that it will be more clear. Next is uh, why does a recursive static route require two routing table lookups? First of all, it look in the routing table for the destination network. Then uh, they will uh, go for the uh, next hope or order address. That's why uh, we say recursive static route require uh, two routing table lookups. Next is configure a recursive static route to every network node directly connected to R1, including the WAN link between R2 and R3. Coming to our topology, here we have to uh, configure a static route in this router R1. Uh, here we can see those networks 172.31.0.0/24, then 172.31.1.196/30, then 172.31.1.128/26. Also, we have to give the next hope address here uh, in this router for all these networks. The next hope address will be the IP address of this interface serial 0/0/0 in this router R2. So here we can see the IP address of this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 in this router R2. It's here 172.31.1.193. Okay, coming to the configuration, coming to R1. Enable configure terminal. Here we have to give the command IP root. Then we have to specify the remote network address. Coming to our topology, here we can see that. First of all, we will configure this remote network 172.31.00/24. We can give here 172.31.0.0. Then we have to give destination prefix mask. So here they given the prefix as slash 24. 255.255.255.0. Then we have to give a next to hope address. So it's here. We will copy this address. Right. Then we will paste it. Enter. Now we will configure the second remote network here. IP root. And here we can see the network address. It's 172. 31.1.196 and here we can see the prefix it's slash 30 here we can see that 252 then uh, same uh, next to our address we have to give here 172.31.1.196 and press enter now we will configure the third uh, remote network. It's here. IP root 172.31.1.128. Then here we can see the prefix. It's a slash 26. 255.255.0.0. One ninety two. Then the next hope address. Okay. Yes. Here we configured a recursive static route to every network not directly connected to R one. What is next? Now test connectivity to the R2 LAN and ping the IP address of PC2 and PC3. Obviously it won't communicate because this router R1 is aware of this R2 LAN and R3 LAN. But we know that R3 and R2 LAN 
uh, are unaware of this uh, R1 LAN. Anyway, we will uh, try to ping from PC1 to PC2. Coming to PC1, command prompt. We will ping to uh, PC2. And here we are waiting for the replies. Request timed out. No, it won't work. Now, we will go to step 2. Why uh, were you unsuccessful? Configure a directly attached static routes on R2. How does a directly attached static route differ from a recursive static route? Yes, just now we have seen how uh, we configure this uh, recursive static route. Uh, we configured uh, using uh, next hop address. So here we are going to configure uh, directly attached static route. Here we are not going to give this uh, next hop address. Uh, here we are going to give um, the exit interface. Yes, we will uh, see that configuration uh, in this uh, router R2. Configure a directly attached static route from R2 to every network not directly connected. Coming to our topology, here we can see uh, our router R2 and here we can see uh, three directly connected networks in this uh, router R2. Uh, we have to configure uh, these two remote networks uh, statically in this router R2. Okay, we will do Okay, we will do that coming to uh, router R2 CLI. Enable configure terminal. Here we are going to give IP a route. Here we can see our network. It's 172.31.1.0. And here we can see the prefix, uh, it's a slash 25, that is 255.255.255.128. Okay, now we are going to give uh, the exit interface. So here the exit interface uh, to this uh, network is here. We will verify that it's serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Now we will configure a static route to this remote network. We will give IP route and here we can see uh, the network address 172.31.1.128. Uh, here we can see the prefix, it's a slash 26. It's a 255.255.255. It's 192. Then we have to check the exit interface uh, to this network. It's serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. 0 slash 0 slash 1. Right. Now we will go to this question, uh, which command only displays directly connected networks? Okay, we can see that we will uh, go to privileged exit mode and here we can give that command. Show IP route connected. So that we can see only connected networks in this router R2. Next question is, which command only displays the static routes listed in the routing table? Okay, we will try the show command here, show IP route, then we will give static. Yes, here we can see uh, which shows only static routes. So, it's static. Next is, so when viewing the entire routing table, how can you distinguish between a directly attached static route and a directly connected network? Yes, it's quite easy. Uh, we will uh, give show IP route. And here we can see uh, the characters given here. C, C means is for connected. And here we can see yes, S is for static. So, uh, using these uh, codes, uh, C and uh, yes, uh, we can distinguish between uh, these uh, routes. Right. Now, we will go to step 3. Configure a default route on R3. How does a default route differ from a regular static route? Yes. 
usually a default route uh, also known as the gateway of last resort is the network route used by a router when no other known route exists for a destination network a static route is used to route traffic to a specific network now configure a default route on r3 okay uh, so that every network not directly connected is reachable Yes, we can configure this default route on this router R3. Coming to CLI, enable configure terminal. Here we are going to give IP route. Then here we are going to give 0.0.0.0, .0, space. We will give the submit mask as 0.0.0.0. .0. Then we have to give uh, the exit interface here we can verify that coming to our topology here we can see the exit interface it's a serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 okay serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 right how is a static route displayed in the routing table okay we will verify that uh, show IP route And here we can see our default route with the S yes star. Now we will go to step 4. Document the commands for fully specified routes. Uh, they are given a note here. Packet Tracer does not currently support configuring fully specified static routes. Therefore, in this step, document the configuration for fully specified routes. Okay, so explain a fully specified route. So when we talk about this fully specified route, uh, we are going to uh, use both the exit interface uh, as well as next to hop address uh, with the static route. And which command provides a fully specified static route from R3 uh, to the R2 LAN? Okay, uh, so we will uh, write that command here. We have to give this command IP space route. Then here we can see uh, our network. It's 172.31.0.0. Then we have to give a submit to mask. Here we can see the prefix is slash 24. Then we are going to give the exit interface. So coming to our topology, here we can see exit interface is serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. 0 slash 0 slash 1. Then we are going to give uh, the next hop address. Here the next hop address uh, is the IP address of this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 in this router R2. So we will get that IP address R2 serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. It's here. We will copy this address. Here we can see fully specified static route. Okay, right. Next is write a fully specified static route from R3 to the R1 LAN. Do not configure the route, just calculate it. Okay, so uh, for, from this R3 uh, to this uh, R1 LAN, we will write here IP route, then the IP network address, it's uh, 172.31.1.0. Here we can see that. Then here we can see the prefix. It's 128. Then exit interface is a serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. Then the next hop address, the IP address of this interface, uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 in this router R2. Uh, it's here already we done that okay oh I think we missed out this uh, write a fully specified route from R3 uh, to the network between R2 and R1 do not configure the route 
just calculate it yes we will do it here we press enter and here we will give that ip root then here we can see the network 172.31.1.192 172.31.1.192 and here we can see the prefix it's a slash 30 okay then we have to give exit interface it's here then the next to hope address okay now we will go to step 5 verify static root configurations use the appropriate show commands to verify correct configurations which show commands can you use to verify that the static roots are configured correctly obviously we have seen in the beginning itself uh, we used show uh, ip root static show ip root connected or even we can give a show ip root uh, so that we can see the enter uh, routing table just we will see these commands uh, in this router r1 enable show ip root here we can see our enter routing table uh, for this router r1 or we can filter it we can give a show ip uh, root connected so that we can see only connected networks or we can give a show IP a root static so that we can see a statically configured root even we can verify this static root configurations uh, using show running config here we can see the details Now coming to part 3, verify connectivity. Every device should now be able to ping every other device. If not, review your static and default road configurations. Okay, now we will verify the connectivity. Uh, first of all, we will ping from PC1 to this PC2. Coming to PC1, command prompt. Uh, here we are going to ping to PC2. And here we can see we get the replies. Now we will ping from PC1 to PC3. Uh, we have to get the IP address of PC3. It's here. Ping to PC3. We are waiting for the replies. Maybe one request timed out. Yes, it's working. It succeeded. So friends, that's all in this packet tracer activity, configuring IPv4 static and default routes. Here we can see our completion status, it's 60 out of 60. Now if you have any doubt, any suggestions, please comment below. Also you can show your love towards our channel by like and sharing with your friends. Stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.